This video was made in collaboration with the Attack on Titan Wiki. For more information, check out the link in the description. The Life of Mikasa Ackerman, Attack on Titan Mikasa Ackerman is one of the two deuteragonists of the series. She's the adoptive daughter of Grisha and Carla Jaeger and the adoptive sister of Eren Jaeger. After her biological mother and father were murdered by bandits, Mikasa was rescued by Eren. She lived with him and his parents for approximately one year before the fall of Wal Maria. Though she desires only to live a peaceful life with Eren, Mikasa chose to follow him into the military, where she is considered the best soldier among the 104th Cadet Corps. She later joined the Scout Regiment to continue following and protecting Eren. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Mikasa Ackerman. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media accounts. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background Mikasa was born to a father who is an Ackerman and an Asian mother. Before her parents' death, she lived peacefully with them in the farmlands of Walmaria. Mikasa underwent a painful scarring ritual from her mother, who cut into her skin the mark of their family and was taught a unique style of embroidery. Being the last of their race made them high-value targets to human traffickers, who killed Mikasa's parents and attempted to kidnap her for the purpose of selling her as a slave to the people in the capital when she was only nine years old. She was rescued by Eren, who tricked and killed two of the slavers. He was then overwhelmed by the third trafficker and was on the verge of being strangled. Desperately, Eren urged Mikasa to fight to win. Although she was initially frightened, she came to realize that this world is a callous and merciless place, dispatching the bandit who was trying to kill Eren. When Eren's father arrived with members of the military police regiment, she was given the scarf by Eren and accepted into his family. This event awakened the fighting instincts and perfect self-control that would later turn her into a formidable soldier. She lived with Eren's family in Walmaria's Shiganshina district until it was destroyed by the Colossal Titan. The Fall of Shiganshina Arc Mikasa appears for the first time in year 845 somewhere inside Walmaria. She's seen waking Eren up, telling him that they need to return home. She's surprised to see tears in his eyes and asks why he's crying. On their way home, they meet Hannes. Mikasa watches as Eren complains about the soldiers slacking off while on duty. Later, both Eren and Mikasa watch the return of the scout regiment forces, witnessing yet another failure of their expedition. After returning home, Mikasa tells on Eren, revealing to his parents his desire to join the scout regiment. Annoyed, Eren leaves, with Mikasa following him. They save Armin Arlet, who is being beaten by local bullies, and together discuss their desire to go outside the walls. At that moment, the three kids witness the sudden appearance of the Colossal Titan that breaches the wall's gate. Mikasa and Eren run back to their home to find it crushed and their mother trapped under the debris. In spite of their attempts, Mikasa and Eren are unable to free her, Hannes rescuing them as the Titan devours their mother. Mikasa and Eren are placed on a ship just as the Armor Titan breaks through the inner gate, letting the Titans inside Wall Maria. Mikasa watches as Eren vows to kill all the Titans as they're transported to safety. Once inside the safety of Wall Rose, Eren confronts a soldier from the Garrison Regiment who manifests his annoyance for having to share their food with outsiders. The short beating the soldiers give Eren causes him to claim that he will retake Wall Maria with his own hands. He insults Armin for his doubt and Mikasa punches him to bring him back to his senses. She then declares that she will do everything to keep him alive, forcing him to eat the rations he had previously discarded out of anger. Humanity's Comeback Arc after the events of Walmaria's destruction, the government's desperate attempt to reclaim the lands using the refugees leads to nothing more than casualties. This prompts Mikasa, Eren, and Armin to enroll in the military and become members of the 104th Cadet Corps. During their training, Mikasa helps Eren as much as she can as she initially fails to grasp the basics of the ODM gear. They manage to pass the qualifying tests, Mikasa quickly proving her skills and is praised as one of the best cadets in military history. At one point, Mikasa asks Annie Leonhardt, a fellow cadet with exceptional skill, to teach her a self-defense technique that she was teaching Eren, which eventually calls for a bet with the 104th Cadet Corps to see who's the stronger fighter. At the 104th Cadet Corps' graduation, she's ranked first in the class. Distress in the year 848, Mikasa takes part in a group navigation training exercise under Thomas Wagner's command. Partway through the exercise, the group's ODM gear is stolen by a band of thieves. The group decides to speed up the exercise to warn Marco's group. 
The next day, Mikasa's group rendezvous with Marco's group and helps them in disarming the remaining bandits they had been engaging. A Sudden Visitor, The Torturous Curse of Adolescence In the year 849, Eren and Mikasa confusedly watch a brewing fight between Sasha and John. Afterward, she and Eren work to unload crates from a wagon. Carrying a number of them with ease, Mikasa notices that Eren's struggling and offers to help him with his, but he angrily refuses. During the cooking competition, Mikasa is shown doing her routine body workout. The Struggle for Trostark Before having the chance to fully apply in the scout regiment so she can keep Eren safe, the colossal titan breaches Walrose the same way it did with Walmaria. Much to her dismay, Mikasa is assigned to the rear guard to help fend off the titans while the civilians escape into the safety of Walshina. Before fulfilling her duty, she makes Eren promise her not to do anything reckless. Later on, an abnormal titan approaches the escaping civilians who are blocked at the gate. Mikasa kills it, saving everyone. She then witnesses why the civilians are taking too long to escape. An overloaded cargo cart is blocking the way. Mikasa asks the businessman to move the cart so that the people could escape, but when he refuses, she resorts to threatening him after knocking his guards unconscious, which scares the man enough to relent and move his goods. Seeing a mother and daughter show their gratitude for saving them, Mikasa flashes back to the time she lost her own parents and realizes that Eren is the only family she has left. Thus, with the evacuation of Trost District's citizens complete, she heads to the front guard in order to aid her comrades. However, the Soul Cadet survivors are low on gas, making them unable to scale the wall while the supply team inside the headquarters has barricaded themselves in against the onslaught of multiple titans. After hearing of Eren's supposed death from Armin, Mikasa regroups the survivors and insults them, saying she'll break through the titans assaulting the headquarters. Because of her grief over Eren's death, she fights irrationally and doesn't notice that she's running out of gas. As two titans close in on her, she contemplates giving up and begins to remember her time with Eren, recalling Eren's cries of fighting back against her kidnappers, which gives her motivation to fight once more. When Mikasa stands up to kill the titan in front of her, another titan comes running from behind and saves her. This titan, which ignores Mikasa, gives Armin enough time to rescue Mikasa and they both continue heading to the supply HQ. As they watch this rogue titan continue killing other titans, they hatch a plan to lure it to the HQ and relieve the siege there. With its help, the cadets manage to successfully refill their gas tanks and have clear access to the wall. However, as they watch, the rogue titan disposes of the last titan surrounding them and Eren appears out of the nape of its neck. Overcome with the relief that Eren is alive, Mikasa quickly rescues and embraces him, and everyone leaves for the wall. However, Jean, along with Annie, Reiner, and Berthold, are ordered to hand Eren over to the superior officers under the command of Kit's Warman and to treat the incident as something confidential. Their refusal to do so causes Mikasa and her friends to be accused of treason and find themselves surrounded by Captain Warman's men, who are prompt to execute them. Mikasa attempts to defend Eren by drawing her blades and threatening to kill anyone who would try to harm Eren, but witnessing Eren's titan form fighting in Trost District, Warman does not hesitate and orders a cannon to fire at them in spite of the latter's claim that he's human. Eren uses his power to block the cannonball and tries to think of an escape plan. He proposes that they either try to flee over the walls and escape into titan territory, or have Armin attempt to persuade the soldiers to spare them, leaving him to choose. Armin tries his best to convince the soldiers that Eren's titan abilities could help to save humanity, but realizes the commander is far too scared to think rationally. Before the order can be given to fire upon them once more, they're saved when Commander Dot Pixis, head administrator of the southern region, intervenes. They're sent on a mission to plug the breach in the wall with a rock that only Eren in titan form can lift. As the mission commences and Eren goes into titan form, he loses control, attacking Mikasa and eventually knocking himself out. The elite team led by Ian, Rico, and Mitabi, designated to defend Eren as he carries the rock, quarrel amongst themselves about what to do next. Mikasa is on the verge of attacking them until Ian orders everyone to continue protecting Eren until he recovers. Thanks to Armin's intervention, Eren eventually regains his senses and successfully places the rock down, albeit with many casualties. At that moment, they're saved by Levi as he kills the titans approaching them. Eve of the Counter-Attack Arc after the Battle of Trost District is over, Eren is brought before a military tribunal to decide his future. Despite Mikasa's best efforts to defend him, she's forced to testify against Eren as his reckless actions have frightened many people in the courtroom. She's also forced to watch helplessly as Eren is assaulted and humiliated by Levi. 
Sometime later, Mikasa and everyone else have their omnidirectional mobility gear inspected in order to find out the culprit who killed the two captured titans. Later on, Commander Erwin Smith comes to recruit new members of the Scout Regiment, which is scheduling an expedition within a few months. Many leave except for Mikasa, Reiner, Armin, Sasha, Krista, Connie, Jean, Berthold, and a few others. Mikasa is then seen to be part of the 57th Expedition. The 57th Exterior Scouting Mission Arc Shortly after leaving for Walmaria, the female Titan appears and defeats numerous Scout Regiment members. The formation eventually reaches the Forest of Giant Trees, with Mikasa being stationed at its outskirts, making sure that no Titans enter the forest. Eventually, she attempts to approach Eren as she hears his roars in his Titan form. Upon reaching Eren's location, she witnesses the female Titan devouring Eren's human body. After overcoming the initial shock, Mikasa charges at the female titan, cutting it up in order to rescue Eren. However, she's unable to do so until she teams up with Levi. They manage to take Eren back and join the rest of the formation. While heading to the walls, the formation is attacked by multiple titans brought by a couple rookie soldiers who disobeyed a direct order from Commander Erwin, and Mikasa must save the rookies who are caught by the titans. Assault on Soesark Following the scout regiment's failure, Armin manages to convince Annie to help him and Mikasa sneak Eren out of Stohis district until they can gather evidence to prove to the king that the walls need to be protected better. However, when Annie makes excuses not to go underground with them, Mikasa gets fed up and draws her blade. Even after Annie transforms into the female titan, Eren has trouble convincing himself to fight her, so Mikasa runs out to try holding her off. Eventually, Eren manages to turn into a titan and attacks Annie. When he begins to overwhelm her, she attempts to climb over Walshina to escape. Mikasa uses her ODM gear to hurl herself high enough up the wall to catch up with the female titan and cut off all of her fingers. She then proceeds to push Annie off so she falls to the ground. Later that day, Mikasa watches over Eren in a room until he wakes up from his battle with Annie. She expresses joy at his survival and remains at his bedside as Armin and Jean head down to a meeting. Clash of the Titans Arc Following the supposed breach of Wall Rose, Mikasa, Eren, and other members of the Scout Regiment come to rescue Reiner, Berthold, Connie, Historia, and Emir from Titans at Utgard Castle. She's among the others who learn that Chris's real name is Historia. After the Scouts regroup on top of Wall Rose, Mikasa is outraged when she overhears Reiner confessing that he and Berthold were the Titans responsible for the attack on Wall Maria and want Eren to join them. She takes them by surprise, striking them with her sword, and tells Eren to run. However, her heart isn't completely in her attack, and she fails to kill them. Their injuries allow them to transform into the Armored and Colossal Titans. Eren transforms into his own Titan to fight Reiner's Armored Titan, and Mikasa, regretting her earlier hesitation, attempts to help him, but her blades have no effect against his armor. Hanji theorizes that he must have gaps in his protection though, since he moves too fast to be uniformly armored. While Eren grapples with Reiner, Mikasa takes advantage of Hanji's suggestion and cuts through the exposed back of Reiner's knees, further weakening his ability to fight. However, Reiner unexpectedly roars, signaling Berthold's Colossal Titan to fall down on top of him and Eren. The resulting blast is strong enough to throw back any scouts nearby. Mikasa regains consciousness five hours later to discover that Eren has been kidnapped and the scouts are in no shape to mount a rescue. She had been able to help Levi save Eren from the female titan before because they could pursue her right away, but that's not possible this time. Hannes offers her an arm and rations to chew on while reminding them that Eren has always been running away and getting into trouble like this and that Mikasa and Armin have always come to bail him out. He reminds them that Eren always fights, even if he's going to lose, so he should be able to hold out until the two of them can rescue him again. Reassured, Mikasa eats her rations to regain her strength. She joins the joint military operation to rescue Eren and heads to the forest of giant trees where they hope to find Reiner, Berthold, and their captives. Once they arrive, she joins Hannes and a number of her fellow scouts in searching the inside of the forest where they encounter Emir in her titan form. Emir kidnaps Historia and flees while Mikasa and the others chase after her. At the forest's edge, Reiner transforms into the armored titan. Emir jumps on his back and Berthold, carrying an unconscious Eren, rides on his shoulder. The soldiers follow the group on horseback and try to free Eren from Berthold, but Emir interferes with their attempts. Realizing that Emir stands in the way of saving Eren, Mikasa prepares to attack her, but Historia jumps in the way, saying that Emir doesn't have a choice but to help Reiner and Berthold. Mikasa is unmoved, having decided six years ago who was important to her. 
and she's out of time and room in her heart to care for more, leaving the rest of the 104th free to try talking Berthold into letting Eren go, though Mikasa is considerably less forgiving than the others. Though Berthold expresses regret over the betrayal, he refuses to hand over Eren, and the scouts are forced to jump off the armored titan when Erwin leads a horde of titans into Reiner. After the armored titan is immobilized by the sheer number of them, Erwin calls for the soldiers to charge in and recover Eren. Mikasa rides her horse at a gallop, weaving around the intimidating number of titans between her and Eren, and launches herself at Berthold, but she misses and sees Eren watching her in panic. Her trajectory carries her straight into another titan that grabs her hard enough to crush her ribs. Jean, who had been riding just behind her, attacks the titan, burying his blade in its eye and allowing Mikasa to get free. With Armin's help, Erwin is able to cut Eren free from Berthold, and Mikasa catches him in the air. The two of them flee on horseback but are knocked to the ground when Reiner begins throwing titans at the retreating soldiers. As they look up, they see that the smiling titan approaching them is the one that ate Eren's mother. Mikasa is unable to defend Eren due to her injury, but Hannes buys them time in an attempt to avenge Carla Jaeger. Eren shouts for Mikasa to free his arm so he can help fight, but when he tries biting himself to transform, nothing happens. Hannes is killed and the battle turns against the soldiers around them, Eren falls into despair, feeling that he's never had the power to do anything. Mikasa practically begs him to listen to her. He showed her how to live with purpose, and he wrapped his scarf around her, and for that, she's grateful. She smiles with tears in her eyes, and Eren vows to wrap that scarf around her as many times as she wants. He punches the smiling titan, triggering something that causes all the other mindless titans to attack it. In the resulting confusion, he carries Mikasa away on his back and also sends the titans after Reiner and Berthold. They escape with the rest of the surviving soldiers and return to Tross District. The Uprising Arc Sometime later, Mikasa is selected to be a member of the new squad Levi, assigned to safeguard Eren and Historia in an isolated forest cabin. Much to her friend's surprise, she rapidly recovers from her broken ribs, able to chop and lift firewood as well as performing sit-ups. Sasha is afterward caught trying to steal a loaf of bread, and her friends confront her. Later that day, Levi's squad assists Hanji in running a series of tests on Eren's titan powers. The tests go poorly and Eren reaches the point of exhaustion, only partially forming while being unresponsive. Mikasa jumps off her horse and runs up to him before Hanji tries pulling Eren's body out of its titan. Mikasa notices Eren's disfigured face and hurriedly cuts him free despite Hanji's eagerness to make a sketch. The next day, Nifa brings a message from Commander Erwin, prompting Levi to tell everybody to clear the cabin immediately. Outside, he reveals the royal government has put a freeze on the scout regiment activity outside the wall and are demanding they hand over Eren and Historia. Levi's squad and three of Hanji's subordinates make for trust. There, a carriage comes crashing through and seemingly kidnaps Eren and Historia, though the kidnapped victims are actually Jean and Armin in disguise. On the roof above the kidnapper's hideout, Mikasa talks to Levi and tells him that Armin's disguise is on the verge of being uncovered. Levi notes that the kidnappers are seemingly amateurs and leaves the situation in her hands. As the lead kidnapper and his henchmen enter the warehouse where Jean and Armin are being held, they notice the guard is missing. Mikasa and the other squad members, including Jean and Armin, who she had already freed, attack the remaining kidnappers. Mikasa personally restrains their leader and informs the rest of the squad that after tying them up, they are to meet with Levi. Shortly after, Mikasa and the others hear the sound of gunshots and go to investigate. They spot the wagon carrying an unconscious Eren and Astoria with Levi in pursuit. To their shock, there's another soldier tailing Levi who aims a gun at his captain. Levi kills the soldier and orders his squad to chase the wagon and kill their opponents given the chance. Mikasa knocks over the soldiers driving the wagon, allowing Armin to take control of it. However, the military police still manages to escape with Eren and Astoria. Mikasa tries to follow them, but Levi stops her. Returning to the warehouse, Mikasa comforts Armin as he has a mental breakdown of killing another human. Once he's calmed down, they enter the warehouse where Levi consoles Armin as well, albeit in such a way that Mikasa becomes angry with him. When Demo Reeves tricks two military police of the 1st Interior Squad to come with him to a remote cabin, Mikasa and other members of Levi's squad take them hostage at gunpoint. Mikasa and the rest of the squad listen uncomfortably to the screams as Levi and Hanji conduct their interrogation. When the two are through, Mikasa and the others are informed that Eren and Historia are likely being held near Rod Race. Hanji also informs them of her theory that Eren will soon be eaten. Mikasa tries to leave immediately to find Eren, and Levi's forced to talk her down. After the scout regiment is accused of trying to monopolize Eren's titan powers, the government begins arresting all members of the organization. Mikasa and the rest of squad Levi avoid being captured and camp out in the woods outside of Stohes. 
Sasha informs them of approaching MPs, and Mikasa and Levi ambush them while Armin distracts them as bait. Mikasa and Armin take their uniforms and put them on with the intention of infiltrating the military police to find out where Eren and his story had been taken. But the two soldiers, Marlow and Hitch, don't take their capture quietly and eventually gain the squad's trust, leading them to a nearby MP checkpoint. After crippling most of the personnel, Levi and his squad escape with a hostage. They interrogate him about Eren and his story's location until the name Kenny Ackerman comes out, surprising Mikasa and Levi with the man's apparent relation to her. Before they can question their hostage further, they hear people approaching on foot. To the entire squad's delight, it's Hanji, who informs them that the scout regiment has been exonerated and that they have a lead on Eren and Historia's whereabouts. On the way, Levi warns his squad that Kenny Ackerman will be their biggest obstacle because fighting him will be like fighting Levi himself. He asks Mikasa if she thinks Kenny might be related to her since they share the same last name. She thinks about it and tells him that she knows that her father's family was persecuted. Levi then asks her whether she experienced a moment when she felt a sudden power awaken inside her and she remembers the moment she took up the knife to kill her kidnapper. She reveals that she did, and upon confirming this, Levi tells her that he and Kenny also experienced such moments in their lives. They arrive at the chapel and find the secret door leading underground. The team makes preparations for facing the anti-personnel control squad, which is waiting for them below. When they're ready, they send barrels of gunpowder and bags of oil down the stairs. Sasha sets fire to them with a flaming arrow and fills the underground chamber with smoke, reducing visibility and the usefulness of firearms. Most of the squad provides additional cover with signal flares, while Mikasa and Levi scout out their enemies using ODM gear. Levi calls for his squad to take out the interior MPs, and the team springs into action, with Mikasa swiftly killing three enemy soldiers. After a concerted push, they manage to force the anti-personnel control squad into a retreat. Mikasa and the rest of Levi's squad are suddenly stopped by a bright flash deeper in the cavern. She realizes that it means a titan has transformed, and worries over Eren. The squad arrives in time for Mikasa to catch Historia, who had been flung back against the wall from the force of Rod Race's transformation into a titan. Mikasa asks if she's okay before taking the keys to Eren's chains from her and throwing them to Levi so he can free him. The ceiling begins caving in, trapping the squad. Eren apologizes for being useless, but Levi and Historia goad him into taking matters into his own hands. He gets up and grabs a bottle labeled Armor that had fallen out of Rod's bag and breaks it between his teeth as he transforms into a titan. Eren's titan form then crystallizes, stabilizing the cavern around the squad, preventing them from being crushed. Even after Mikasa helps cut him out of it, his hardened form doesn't disappear, which Levi states is a huge development as they can now seal the hole in Wall Maria. Mikasa joins the rest of her squad in meeting up with Erwin and pulling back to Orvid District where they make preparations to fight the gargantuan titan that used to be Rod Race. As they're preparing to hear Erwin's plan, Mikasa suggests to Astoria that she punch Levi when she becomes queen. At dawn, the titan arrives and Eren, Mikasa, and Armin assemble a stack of barrels filled with gunpowder at Hanji's direction. Mikasa finds Eren moping and prods him back to work. However, to her surprise, he punches his own face to bring himself back to his own senses. When Rod reaches the wall, Levi instructs the garrison soldiers to flee while the scout regiment soldiers douse themselves in water to withstand the heat. Eren changes into his titan and uses the stacked barrels as an explosive by shoving them down Rod's open mouth. Mikasa joins the rest of the scouts in cutting down the pieces of titan flesh that rain down to ensure that the main body of Rod Race is slain. After Historia is crowned as the new queen, Mikasa and squad Levi accompany her as she goes to find Levi so she can punch him. Eren tries to tell Mikasa to take back her suggestion to punch Levi, but Mikasa only doubles down, telling Historia to dare Levi to hit her back now that she's his queen. Historia follows through on the advice, but Levi surprises the whole squad by smiling and thanking them. Two months later, the members of Squad Levi help out an orphanage that Historia has started. While they're working, Historia has a small conversation with Eren, but they're interrupted by a stone-faced Mikasa who takes the items Eren's carrying, saying he's tired from all his training. Eren complains that she shouldn't treat him like an old man. While the soldiers eat and celebrate the success of the Titan guillotine fashioned by Hanji, Mikasa remains silent throughout most of the conversation until Eren begins to remember the day he ate his father. Recognizing where his mind's going, Mikasa stops him, saying that he should finish eating before talking. He doesn't stop trying to remember though, and suddenly he realizes that the man that his father met the day Wal Maria fell was their old commandant, Keith Shaddis. They then decide to pay him a visit. The following day, Eren, Mikasa, Armin, and the others travel to the training camp to talk with Keith. They talk inside a small house and Keith tells them everything he knows. 
How he met Grisha 20 years ago outside the walls, his relationship with him and Eren's mother during those years, and how he was present in the night Grisha injected Eren with the Titan Serum, but didn't see anything, and at the end, doesn't know anything about Grisha's secrets. Sometime later, the soldiers have a great dinner to celebrate finishing the preparations for retaking Wall Maria. Mikasa's present, eating and watching Sasha's rampage, and Jean and Eren's fight. Even when Jean blames Eren for the dangers that he puts Mikasa in, she calmly decides not to intervene. When the fight ends, Mikasa sits outside with Eren and Armin. After seeing a soldier that reminds the three of Hannes, she wonders if retaking Walmaria will make things return to how they were. They agree that they can bring back those days, but some things are now forever lost. However, Armin not only thinks this, he considers that being part of the scout regiment will allow them to see the ocean and the whole world. At sunset the following day, the scout regiment is ready to go to the Shiganshina district. After hearing the cheers of the citizens, Erwin starts the operation and Mikasa rides along squad Levi towards Shiganshina. Lost in the Cruel World Mikasa stands atop the wall with Eren and Armin as the guillotine-like device crushes the head of a titan below. She thinks back at a time and place with the two, where they reminisced about the old days before the fall of Wal Maria. She recalls another time during the struggle for trust when Armin first informed her of Eren's apparent death. Mikasa experienced a vision of an alternate reality shortly after. Return to Shiganshina Arc The scouts are now walking within a mountaintop forest nearing dawn. Mikasa leads Eren's horse despite his complaints as the others encourage him to rest as much as possible for his upcoming duties. Jean spots a nearby titan and Hanji quickly orders the group to illuminate the area with the fragments of the race chapel cave. She claims that it's dozing away and the group moves on. A few moments after this, Mikasa begins to recognize the area they're in and claims that she collected firewood there once before. Eren and Armin also begin to recognize the area and Mikasa notes that she can hear the river stream. The group then finds themselves near the Shiganshina district and race in on horses. Erwin orders that all soldiers switch to ODM gear and rush the main gate, covered by their hoods to distract any watching enemies. Mikasa is among the soldiers surrounding the gate as Eren flies up above to transform. After Eren successfully seals the hole in Wall Maria, Mikasa retrieves him from his titan form and returns him to the top of the wall. Giving Eren her cloak, Mikasa accompanies the rest of her squad as they return to meet up with Erwin and the rest of the scout regiment. However, before they can return, they see a signal flare fired by Erwin and stop to await further orders. From her position, Mikasa and her comrades are able to observe as Reiner reveals himself to be hiding inside the wall and the Beast Titan and his army materialize to engage the scout regiment. As Eren and Reiner fight in their titan forms, Mikasa and her squad take up positions around them and wait for a chance to attack. Once Eren has maneuvered Reiner into a section of the town with tall buildings, Mikasa and Hanji use their new Thunder Spears to blind him. After her teammates destroy the armor covering Reiner's nape, the entire squad moves in and destroys Reiner's nape with their Thunder Spears. Afterward, Mikasa attempts to console a horrified Armin, but is interrupted by Reiner's Titan form, which begins roaring. After Armin reveals to Hanji that Berthold is approaching, Mikasa and the rest of the scouts retreat from Reiner's immediate vicinity in order to escape being caught in the blast of Berthold's transformation into the Colossal Titan. When Berthold chooses not to transform in order to check on Reiner, Armin attempts to negotiate with him. However, while Armin is attempting to talk with Berthold, Mikasa takes the opportunity to attack him from behind. She's unsuccessful in killing him and comments as he flees on his drastic change in personality. While Mikasa and Armin are returning to their comrade's position, Berthold transforms, and they're forced to hide behind a building to shield themselves from the blast. As Berthold begins destroying Shiganshina, Mikasa observes that he doesn't seem to know their location. Pointing out that they won't have time to look for any survivors from Hanji's squad, Mikasa suggests that Armin take the lead of their squad, though Armin then gives Jean command. After retreating from Berthold, Eren tries to get Berthold's attention, but he ignores them. Deciding that they'll have to engage Berthold directly, Mikasa takes Connie's Thunder Spear and prepares to engage Berthold. While Eren attacks Berthold directly, Mikasa and the rest of the squad spread out to try finding an opening to attack. However, before they can, Berthold kicks Eren into the side of Walmaria, to Mikasa's horror. Jean assures her that Eren's not dead, and that their main concern at the moment is taking down Berthold. Jean formulates a plan for he, Connie, and Sasha to draw Berthold's attention while Mikasa strikes his nape with the Thunder Spears. Just as Mikasa moves in to strike Berthold, he uses his steam to prevent her from reaching him. When Mikasa lands on the roof where the others already are, she's visibly injured. She explains that a piece of the Thunder Spear hit her, but the wound isn't deep. She asks Armin if he believes that there's any possible way for them to fight back, but he sees none. 
they are startled by the sound of a house exploding behind them. From it emerges Reiner, his head fully regenerated. While Armin and Eren choose to confront the Colossal Titan, Mikasa agrees to join the others in an attack against the Armored Titan. As Reiner begins to run to Eren, Mikasa sends one of her Thunder Spears into his knees, crippling him. She notices the Colossal Titan in the distance beginning to emit much steam, causing her to worry about Eren and Armin for a moment before she returns her focus to attack on Reiner. While the others proceed with a the plan they devise to defeat Reiner, Sasha is injured and misses her Thunder Spear attack on the hinge of the Armor Titan's jaw. Mikasa realizes that since she has the only Thunder Spear left and Reiner's jaw has not completely unhinged, she can't proceed with the plan to blow Reiner's body out of his nape by sending a Thunder Spear into his mouth. As she considers this situation, Hanji returns to the battle, sending their own Thunder Spear at Reiner and destroying his other jaw hinge. With the plan now on the verge of success, Mikasa jumps into Reiner's mouth ordering him to get out as she sends her final Thunder Spear into his mouth, defeating the Armored Titan. While Hanji interrogates an injured Reiner, Mikasa begins treating Jean's injuries. Although Hanji wants to simply execute Reiner, Jean convinces them to keep him alive long enough to steal his powers with the Titan injection. Hanji orders Mikasa to go retrieve the serum from Levi, and to send up a signal flare if there's a change of plans so that Hanji will know to kill Reiner. When Mikasa arrives at Levi's position, she's horrified to find a hysterical Eren trying to keep a badly injured Armin alive. As Levi agrees to use the Titan Serum to save Armin's life, Mikasa shoots a flare to notify Hanji that Reiner must be killed. However, Levi's mind is swayed by the arrival of another soldier, who reveals that Erwin is also mortally wounded. Horrified by Levi's announcement that he'll save Erwin and not Armin, Mikasa draws her blade and begins to advance upon him. As Levi punches Eren in the face, Mikasa pins him to the roof and draws her blade to his neck. Noticing how worn out Levi is, she attempts to grab the Titan Serum from his hand, as Levi reminds her that without Erwin's strength, humanity can never defeat the Titans. When Flock approaches her, she flips her blade in order to strike him with the blunt side of the sword and knock him down, only to be stopped by Hanji. As they both struggle, Mikasa eventually capitulates, remembering a happier time when she, Eren, and Armin were children, as tears roll down her face. After this, Armin returns to his human form, and Mikasa, along with Eren, pick him up off the ground as she cries tears of joy to see him alive and well. Atop the wall, after Eren informs Armin of what has happened after the battle ended, Hanji orders Mikasa, Levi, and Eren to continue surveying and head for the Jaeger family's house. Upon reaching the basement's door, Eren tries to open the door's lock and is surprised that the key doesn't fit. Levi kicks down the door and they enter the room. They find it had been set up to appear as much as possible a common doctor's office, but after further investigation, Mikasa discovers a keyhole on a locked drawer in the desk, which the key unlocks. The drawer seems empty at first, but Levi notices the false bottom and under it they find three hidden books kept intact with various preservatives. Mikasa and Eren open the first book, and within it, they find an uncannily realistic portrait of Grisha standing beside a fair-haired woman. On the back of it, Grisha had written that what they're holding is called a photograph, and that humanity has not perished. Upon returning to the walls, Eren and Mikasa are put in prison cells for several days as punishment for their actions against Levi. During this time, Armin visits them and logs Eren's memories as he retells them many events in his father Grisha's life that matched up with what was found in the books in his basement. Among these memories is a conversation between him and Eren Kruger, an allied spy to the Restorationists. During this conversation, Kruger tells Grisha that anyone who has inherited the powers of the Titan will only live for 13 years, as no one with this power can outlive its original owner, Emir Fritz, who founded the nation of Eldia and all its subjects. Upon hearing this revelation, Mikasa becomes very depressed and denies its validity, knowing that Armin and Eren only have a short number of years left to live if it's true. After Hanji, the current commander, puts too much pressure on Eren in the next prison cell, Levi orders them free. Mikasa leaves her cell, having lost weight after not eating in her state of depression. Mikasa attends a military meeting in Trost on how to proceed with the findings of the basement. She sits silently as Hanji deliberates their interpretation of the events, but is shocked and confused when Eren shouts all of a sudden during their meeting. The nine surviving scouts later attend a ceremony to be honored for their success in the Battle of Shiganshina District. Before the start of the ceremony, Eren gets into an argument with Flock over Armin being saved over Commander Erwin. When Mikasa attempts to calm Eren down, Flock commends Mikasa over her acting like an adult and giving up in saving Armin. This statement surprises and upsets her, 
she would later go on to be commemorated for her bravery in Shiganshina with a medal. Roughly a year after the struggle for trust, after the Executioner from Hell has eradicated all Titans within Wall Maria and Shiganshina has been repopulated, the Scout Regiment was able to hold an expedition beyond the walls for the first time in six years. Mikasa ventures out on horseback beyond the walls for the first time. After following a deformed Titan's trail, the scouts reach the edge of Parody Island and behold the ocean. The scouts dismount their horses, discard their boots, and head to the beachfront. Mikasa is startled by an ocean wave but goes on to give Armin a warm smile. She listens as Armin begins to joyfully talk with Eren over the immense size of the ocean. However, these happy moments fade as Eren solemnly states that the ocean doesn't hold freedom and that enemies are still awaiting them across the other side. Marley Arc One year after retaking Shiganshina, Mikasa goes with the other members of the scouts to intercept the survey ship sent from Marley. Like the others present, Mikasa is surprised to see two sailors rebel and force the others to surrender. While watching the two meet with Levi and Hanji, Mikasa ponders what their plan might be while trying to wake up Sasha. An alliance is formed between Parody and the group of rebels, calling themselves the anti marleyan Volunteers, and preparations and training begin for the impending war with Marley. While at a firing range, Mikasa and Armin both agree that it's good to see both sides are getting along with each other but are visibly troubled by Eren's insistence that Parody must launch a preemptive assault on Marley to buy themselves more time to prepare. Mikasa is among the scouts that meet with an ambassador from the nation of Hizuru named Kiyomi Azumabito. At a meeting between the two parties, Kiyomi displays the crest of the Izumabito clan, and Mikasa is shaken to see it's the same as the tattoo on her wrist. After some prompting by Eren, Mikasa shares it, saying that her mother gave it to her as a girl and to pass it down to her children later on. Kiyomi describes how both Hizuru and Eldia were allies long ago, and laments that the nation suffered after the Great Titan War. Kiyomi finishes by stating that Mikasa is a descendant of Hizuru's lost lord and the hope for their nation. Although Mikasa is overwhelmed by this information, Historia is ecstatic, believing that Hizuru will be more than willing to trust Parody due to Mikasa's lineage. Later, after spending the day building train tracks, Eren mentions that he only has roughly five years left to live and begins to consider who he should pass his Titan abilities to. Mikasa immediately volunteers herself, but Jean advises against it. Mikasa is half Asian and they don't know what the Ackerman clan is, if they're subjects of Amir or not, so she might not even be capable of becoming a titan at all. As the others volunteer themselves also, Eren decides to not choose any of them due to valuing their friendship and not wanting to have any of their lives forcibly cut short on his behalf. As Eren begins his assault on Marley, Mikasa joins the scout regiment in retrieving him and attacking Liberio. During the battle between Eren and the Warhammer Titan, Mikasa attacks the Warhammer from behind, launching eight Thunder Spears into its nape. Mikasa lands on the shoulder of the decapitated attack titan and asks Eren to come home. Mikasa demands to know if Eren realizes the horror he has committed, killing civilians and children. Eren doesn't answer the question and instead points out that the Warhammer Titan is still alive. Mikasa is shocked to see the Titan standing up, since she's sure that she destroyed its nape completely, and the Warhammer Titan then fires a pike of its hardened substance towards them. Mikasa quickly grabs Eren and flees away from the attack titan's body, barely avoiding getting struck. Eren comes up with a plan to defeat and eat the Warhammer Titan, and asks Mikasa to distract the enemy enough for him to enact it. Mikasa re-engages the Warhammer Titan, while Eren transforms back into the Attack Titan and captures the Warhammer's pilot, who was hiding under the ground encased in crystal and controlling the Warhammer remotely via long cord. The Jaw Titan tries to ambush Eren but is fended off by Levi, allowing Mikasa to intercept him and knock him down off the wall with a Thunder Spear. However, she's forced to break off her attack by the arrival of the Cart Titan. While the scouts and warriors clash, Mikasa attempts to destroy the Warhammer's crystal with a Thunder Spear, but it fails to even crack. Staying close to Eren, she watches as he unsuccessfully tries to consume the crystal. The Jaw Titan attempts to charge Eren, but Mikasa intervenes, drawing her blades to engage it. Mikasa swings her swords at the Jaw Titan, but it lunges out of the way and goes for the Attack Titan. She follows it and tries to provide support, and as it momentarily breaks off from the attack, Mikasa notes that this current Jaw Titan is much faster than Amir's Titan. It then switches its focus from Eren to an incoming airship that serves as the scout's method of retreat from the battle. Mikasa anticipates the Jaw Titan going after the airship and manages to catch it off guard, slicing through both legs. After Eren defeats Reiner's Titan, Mikasa flies to Eren and convinces him to come back home. She then leaves with Eren and flies towards the incoming airship. After they board the airship, Levi kicks Eren due to his insubordination, infuriating Mikasa. 
She tries to protest, but is stopped by Armin. The four meet with Zeke and Yelena at another part of the ship. A commotion ensues outside and Connie and Jean enter the room, carrying two captured stowaways. Jean announces that one of them shot Sasha, and she's unlikely to survive, prompting Mikasa and Armin to run out of the room to see her. Sasha dies from her injuries, with Mikasa and Armin futilely trying to wake her up. After the scouts return to Parody Island, Mikasa attends the funeral service held for the eight soldiers lost during the battle in Liberio. Afterwards, she remains by Sasha's grave to continue mourning. She is interrupted by the sound of Connie and Jean saving Niccolo from being harassed by a military police brigade soldier. As Niccolo pays his respects to Sasha, Mikasa informs him of how she died. War for Parody Arc when Connie mentions they should be prepared to kill Eren if he sides with their enemy, Mikasa opposes him, but he glares at her and asks if she would side with the enemy too. Mikasa says no, but claims that Eren still cares for them, and tries to convince them his recent behavior is reflective of that. The others don't believe her, and Jean brings up the fact that despite this, Eren still had no problem forcing them to fight, and that resulted in Sasha's death. Mikasa is further shocked when Connie reveals that Eren laughed when told that Sasha had died. Armin decides they should prepare for a worst case scenario to have someone turn and kill Eren if he proves to be a threat. Mikasa protests that he still has several years left, but Armin states they'll decide what happens after confirming where Eren stands. After a group of scout regiment recruits leak the news of Eren's arrest to the public and are found out, Mikasa attends the hearing that Hanji conducts with them. After hearing them out, Hanji orders the perpetrators jailed for their actions, and Mikasa escorts one of them, Luis, to her cell. Luis tries to justify Eren's actions and tries to convince Mikasa to help free him, but Mikasa simply cuts her off and leaves. Mikasa meets up with Armin and notifies him that Dallas Zachary has agreed to see them. Both of them are stunned to hear Zachary refuse the request to see Eren, and Mikasa is taken aback by the possibility that Zeke Jaeger has been controlling Eren's behavior and movements prior to the attack on the Barrio. After being sent away, Mikasa notices several military police soldiers enter Zachary's office and decides to eavesdrop. Armin tries to persuade her not to, but she insists on knowing what direction the scout regiment's going. Suddenly, she grabs Armin and dives away just as an explosion goes off in Zachary's office. Both go outside and see Zachary's dismembered corpse from the blast. Mikasa is speechless about who could have been behind the assassination as the crowd of protesters chant in approval. During an emergency meeting by the other heads of the military, Mikasa hears Armin testify that he observed several recruits from the scouts leave the area and were most likely responsible for the explosion. She's shocked to hear Eren has escaped confinement, and blocked his escape route so no one would follow him. Mikasa accompanies Armin, Hanji, and Onyankapon as the military conduct a research for the renegades, staring blankly ahead and unresponsive to Armin as he tries to calm her. Later, Mikasa attends another meeting to plan the military's response to the emergence of the rebels, now dubbed the Jaegerists. As the meeting concludes, Kiyomi pulls Mikasa aside to ask her to consider fleeing to the Zumabito ship if the need arises. Mikasa thanks her for her consideration, though makes it clear that she sees herself as an Eldian foremost and intends to see the fate of the island that raised her. Furthermore, after Kiyomi tells her about the Izumabito's shaky political situation, Mikasa says this is all the more reason not to rely on the family. Despite Mikasa's words, Kiyomi states that no matter what happens with the island, the family will protect her. Heading outside with the other scout veterans, Mikasa briefly squabbles with Connie over Eren's connection to the Jaegerists and over being suspected. Believing Zeke to have a secret scheme, the scouts ride out to Alid, a restaurant employing Marleyan workers. After arriving for their investigation and meeting up with Niccolo, Mikasa and the others wait in a back room for him to finish his work. A short while later, Armin calls everybody to the main room where Niccolo is attacking the runaway warrior candidates over the murder of Sasha. Eventually, when Mr. Brouse's understanding attitude calms the situation down, Mikasa goes over to the female candidate to check on her wounds. Suddenly, another girl named Kaya attempts to stab the candidate. However, Mikasa blocks the attack. Mikasa and Armin take her into the next room as the Blouse family weeps. In a separate room, Mikasa sits with Gabby and Armin. When asked by Gabby why she saved her, Mikasa doesn't give any reason why when Eren unexpectedly appears. Before they can say anything, Eren silently holds up his right hand, which is bleeding. Understanding Eren's intent if they don't comply, Mikasa and Armin obey his request to sit down at the table. As they hear Flock lead the others away, Mikasa can only sit in stunned silence while Eren and Armin begin to talk. When Eren mentions himself finally being free, Mikasa says that he's not and is being controlled by Zeke. She mentions how Eren was not like this before and brings up how he saved her from being kidnapped all those years ago, pointing to the scarf Eren gave her. Eren glares at her and firmly reminds her to keep her hands on the table. 
Stunned by this reaction, Mikasa silently complies. After Eren calls Armin a useless traitor, Mikasa asks Eren what he's doing and hears that Eren learned about her family's lineage from Zeke as well. She hears from Eren that the Ackerman clan can manifest the power of the Titans while remaining in human form and will activate in the presence of a person recognized as the king. He muses that her instincts as an Ackerman are the sole reason why Mikasa has stuck by him for so long. Bringing up the example of her attempted kidnapping, Eren reminds Mikasa that she only acted when he told her to. Realizing this, Mikasa tries to explain it off, but Eren remarks that Ackermans also suffer severe headaches due to their true selves fighting the urge to protect the host. Recalling that it happened to her, Eren flatly states that the real Mikasa died that day in the hut and all that's left are her Ackerman instincts. Mikasa is unable to speak and starts to break down and cry when Eren remarks he's always hated her calling her nothing more than an obedient slave. When Armin tries to assault Eren, Mikasa swiftly blocks his attack and slams him into the table, much to both their shock and horror. As Eren starts beating Armin, Mikasa continues to cry and begs him to stop. Eren then orders her, Armin, and Gabi taken away to Shiganshina district. Afterwards, Mikasa is relocated to a prison cell alongside the other captives. During her imprisonment, Jean inquires more about her recent encounter with Eren from Armin, but Mikasa rebuffs the remarks, not wanting to explain. They're then interrupted by Yelena, who came to explain Zeke's true intentions. Afterwards, Mikasa remains idle as the others react to Yelena's explanation of the euthanization plan. As the fight on the rooftop ensues, Mikasa and the other prisoners wonder what the sound overhead them was about. Onyakapon arrives shortly to release them, requesting that all imprisoned soldiers join the fight against Marley to keep Eren safe. As they head to put on sets of ODM gear, Mikasa and Armin discuss what Eren's motivations might be for pushing them away. Although Armin is unsure of Eren's intentions, he assures Mikasa that Eren was lying about her Ackerman genes and simply used his knowledge of her headaches to give his lie credence. As she's suiting up, Mikasa is visited by Luis, who tries to bond with her. Mikasa ignores the girl and departs for the battlefield. Before leaving, she folds up the scarf given to her by Eren and leaves it behind. Along with the others, Mikasa notices Zeke getting shot and falling off the wall. As Armin decides that they must neutralize the Cart Titan, both of them are shot at by several Marleyan soldiers hiding in a nearby house. After Connie destroys it with a Thunder Spear, Mikasa goes with Armin to the Cart Titan while Commander Pixis and Niall Dock of the military police coordinate efforts on the ground. Suddenly, a loud scream is heard throughout the district. Mikasa sees several flashes of light and realizes that Zeke has transformed the affected soldiers, the ones who drank the wine, into pure titans. Reaching the top of the wall where the car titan is stationed, Mikasa saves Armin after he destroys the titan artillery cannon atop its back. Cutting through the soldiers accompanying it, Mikasa then glares at Peek. She's then charged at by the car titan and angles out of range while preparing to strike it. Before they can engage, Eren and Zeke make contact, causing the wall to collapse and abruptly end Mikasa's attack. Mikasa and Armin are horrified to see the titans inside emerging. Looking at Eren's new titan form, Mikasa wonders if there was any other choice they could have made, or if she had answered differently when Eren had asked her what he meant to her, that could have avoided the battle they find themselves in now. As the wall titans begin to march, Armin assumes that Eren is using the founding titan to send the wall titans to attack the forces amassing in Marley to attack Parody. However, he's perplexed to see that all of Walmaria is crumbling, telling Mikasa that an attack on Marley should have only required the titans contained in Shiganshina's outer wall. They're interrupted by Eren, who begins speaking to all subjects of Amir through the Founding Titan. To Mikasa's shock, Eren declares that he's going to be using the Founding Titan to completely exterminate all life outside Parody Island. Mikasa and Armin regroup with Jean and Connie, who have Falco with them. Noticing their fellow soldiers being attacked by titans, Armin and Jean go to help them, but Mikasa points out that they need to deal with Falco. Jean suggests feeding the boy to one of the titans while Connie argues that his mother should be allowed to eat Falco. Armin doesn't want to sacrifice Falco at all, arguing that killing him will only breed more animosity with the warriors. The group is attacked by a titan, allowing Connie to flee with Falco before the group can stop him. The group returns to the military headquarters where they rally the soldiers trapped inside to help them kill the titans which have amassed around the building. After clearing out the first wave of titans, Mikasa's group lies in wait at the building while more soldiers lead the remaining titans to the building to be killed, subsequently clearing all of them. When combat had ended, Mr. Browse brings Mikasa and Armin to go meet Gabi, who begs them to return Falco to her. Armin explains what has happened to Falco, and Gabi desperately tries to argue that Eren can return Connie's mother to normal with the Founding Titan in order to spare Falco. Gabi argues that he was capable of even removing the Armored Titan's hardened skin, prompting Mikasa to ask Gabi about Reiner's whereabouts. 
Mikasa tries to convince Armin not to pursue Connie to Ragako, but is unsuccessful. As Armin's leaving, Mikasa tries to ask Armin what they'll do about Eren, causing Armin to lash out at her for not focusing on more pressing issues that they have. He then tells her that Erwin would have had better judgment in that moment and departs. As Armin leaves, Mikasa notices that her scarf is no longer where she left it. Mikasa later finds Jean and Flock with a dead volunteer and demands to know what happened. Flock claims to be acting on Eren's behalf to wipe out any resentment Parody might have. Flock attempts to recruit Jean, but Mikasa interrupts him, demanding to know what happened to Hanji and Levi. Flock claims to her shock that Zeke killed them. The next morning, Mikasa finds Luis in the infirmary wearing her missing scarf. Luis claims that Eren told her to throw the scarf away, so she decided to take it instead, prompting Mikasa to demand that she return it immediately. Later, Mikasa and John are contacted by Hanji, who informs the two of the plan to join forces with Marley to stop Eren. Mikasa agrees to it. After receiving the signal from Jean to leave the military headquarters, Mikasa departs with her comrades. On their way out of Shiganshina, they pick up and join forces with Annie and Reiner. That night, the combined forces of Marley and Parody share a meal as they discuss how to oppose Eren. As tensions run high between the Survey Corps and the Warriors, Annie demands to know if the Corps will be able to kill Eren if no other option is presented. Mikasa states that killing Eren is not the only way to stop him, confirming Annie's suspicion that Mikasa and her friends would try to stop the Warriors from killing Eren. Mikasa steps up to confront Annie, but she defuses the situation by assuring Mikasa that she has no issue with Eren living if he can be convinced to stop the rumbling. The next day, the group travels to Parody's Harbor with the intention of using the Izumabito's clan's airship to pursue Eren, only to find that the harbor has been occupied by Jaegerists. As the group gears up for a confrontation, Annie suggests launching an all-out attack, and Mikasa reminds her that they can't risk getting the Izumabito killed in the crossfire. The discussion is interrupted by Hanji, who reveals to everyone's horror that Eren and his titans have apparently already reached Marley. The group settles on a plan to try to trick Flock into handing over the Izumabito mechanics so that they can operate the ship. Flock instead tries to execute the Izumabito, necessitating Mikasa to intervene and save them. Mikasa helps Kiyomi disarm Flock and his guards, but Flock manages to escape and alert the other Jaegerists to their attack. Mikasa, Hanji, Jean, and Magath lead Kiyomi and the mechanics to the basement of the building, where they're being kept in, and take shelter there so that Annie and Reiner can transform and fight without risk of collateral damage. After it's decided that the flying boat will be taken to Odiha, so it can be prepped for flight under more favorable conditions, Mikasa brings news of the change to Annie and Reiner, and instructs them to protect the Izumabito service crew. As Mikasa engages the Jaegerists, she's alerted by Hanji about reinforcements arriving by train, but is shocked to see the train derail itself. Once the boat is ready to depart, Mikasa helps carry an injured Annie on board. On board the ship, Mikasa and Jean are seen holding back Annie, who is in distress after Hanji reveals that Liberio can't be saved from the rumbling anymore. Upon arriving in Odiha, Mikasa helps out with the preparations for the flying boat to take off. While working, Mikasa suggests that Annie practice with the new anti-personal equipment, but Annie reiterates that she doesn't intend to continue helping the group. Mikasa notices Annie watching Armin, and reminds her that he'll be going with them to find Eren. Annie asks Mikasa if she'll kill Eren to save humanity, and Mikasa claims that she will not. As work on the flying boat nears completion, Mikasa and the other soldiers prepare to depart. However, Flock reveals himself inside the hangar, having followed them across the ocean and fires on them. Mikasa fires one of her anchors into Flock's throat, killing him before he can harm anyone. But she isn't quick enough to stop him from rupturing the boat's fuel tank. As Eren's titans arrive in Odiha, the group is forced to depart without Hanji, who stays behind to buy them time to escape. En route to Eren, Mikasa participates in the meeting to discuss the best plan to stop him. During the meeting, Mikasa inquires about Reiner's hunch that Eren wants to be stopped by someone. The meeting's interrupted as the group is being pulled into paths by Eren. As his comrades try to talk Eren down, Mikasa pleads for Eren to return to them. Seeing Eren in the distance, Mikasa and the others try to reach him but are unable to get any closer. Eren tells them that he called them to the paths to let them know that they'll have to kill him to stop the rumbling, before sending them back to the flying boat. As the flying boat reaches Eren, it comes under fire from the Beast Titan. Mikasa and her comrades jump from the boat and use their maneuvering gear to evade the beast's projectiles before engaging it directly. The group makes short work of the Beast Titan, only to find that Zeke isn't inside its nape. Mikasa is alarmed when Armin decides to transform and use the explosion to find Zeke, but Armin reassures her that he doesn't intend to kill Eren. However, before Armin can execute his plan, an army of titans begins generating atop Eren and abducts him. Peek is disabled while trying to blow up Eren's nape, and Levi orders his squad to focus on saving Armin. 
They don't get far before Berthold's colossal titan appears. It disables Reiner's titan and throws it at the group, knocking them off Eren's founding titan. Mikas is the only soldier left with functioning equipment in any state to fight, leaving her as the only one to defend her comrades from the approaching titans. She's quickly overwhelmed defending all her comrades and Levi uses up the last of his strength to aid her, but passes out from his injuries in the process. Mustering her strength, Mikasa prepares to make a last stand against the titans, only for them all to be whisked away to safety by Falco, who's learned to fly in his titan form. Atop Falco's Titan, Mikasa reveals to Annie that Armin had been captured by Eren's Titans and asks Annie to help rescue them. Levi decides to have the group split up to simultaneously rescue Armin and detonate the explosive on Eren's nape, to Mikasa's horror. Mikasa tries to change her friends' minds, but is unsuccessful and Annie orders her to focus on rescuing Armin to take her mind off Eren. Arriving at Eren's Titan's tailbone, Mikasa, Connie, and Annie identify the Titan which took Armin and begin their pursuit of it. As the three fight off the titans which attack them, the Okapi titan which took Armin flees, and Mikasa has Annie throw her in its direction in the hopes of catching up to it. However, other titans begin physically shielding it, and she eventually breaks her blades on the skin of an armored titan. Annie saves Mikasa from the armor, but the two of them and Connie are left surrounded as the Okapi flees to Berthold's colossal titan. Just as they're about to be overwhelmed, Berthold's titan intervenes and begins fighting alongside them. Mikasa uses the opportunity to pursue the Okapi again and is finally able to cut Armin out of its mouth after Gabi shoots it in the head. Jean manages to detonate Eren's nape thanks to the help of their new allies and Mikasa joins her friends in evacuating atop Falco's titan so that Armin can transform. As the group touches down on Fort Salta, Mikasa begins suffering from another headache, grieving that the last conversation she had with Eren ended with him claiming he hated her. The group is relieved to see that Reiner survived Armin's transformation, but they're disheartened to see that Eren and the Centipede also survived. To Mikasa's distress, Levi decides that the only hope they have of stopping the rumbling is killing Eren so that the source can't reattach itself to him. The source begins emitting smoke into Salta, and the soldiers realize that it is attempting to transform the Eldians in the fort into pure titans. Leaving behind Jean and Connie, Mikasa joins Levi and Peek in boarding Falco and departing to face Eren once again. As they draw near to Eren, Mikasa experiences another strong headache, causing her to see a vision. In her dream, Mikasa is living in isolation with Eren following their decision to run away from the parody Marleyan conflict. Eren notices that Mikasa has been crying, and Mikasa claims that she doesn't think it's okay for her to be there. Eren muses that the only option they had was to run away and live out the rest of his four years together, since he couldn't bring himself to allow Historia to suffer or to rumble the people living outside the walls. Mikasa apologizes for bringing up the past, and Eren asks her to forget about him when he dies. In the real world, Mikasa says that she can't forget about him. Tying her scarf around her neck once again, Mikasa tells Levi that Eren is inside his titan's mouth, and asks him to help her reach him. Levi uses a thunder spear to blow a hole in Eren's mouth, and Mikasa enters it, immediately severing Eren's head from his titan's body. Kissing Eren, Mikasa bids him goodbye. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.